All right, so here we are again. This is lesson 7.1. It's the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, we've already talked about the Pythagorean Theorem this year. We've already used it. We're just going to make things a little bit harder today and take a look at one new concept as well that deals with the Pythagorean Theorem. So, quick review. What does the Pythagorean Theorem say? Well, most of you would answer a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you'd be partly right. Um, you got to be careful with that because you can't just use it on any triangle. So the Pythagorean Theorem is a little more specific. It says in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, that's actually the way it's written. In a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So let's think about that. In a right triangle, the sum. So that means we have addition the squares of the legs. So we're going to square one leg, we're going to square the other leg, some means we're going to add them, and it's going to equal the hypotenuse squared. So that's where we get our a squared plus b squared equals c squared from. We've got to keep in mind that a and b have to be the legs, and that c has to be the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. If you ever get this mixed up and you put c down here on a leg, you're automatically going to get things wrong. So in this case, yes, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right? So the square of the legs added together, the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. All right? So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so let's take a look at an example of that. So over here we have a right triangle. We have a 9, we have a 12, and we have an x. So a and b are our legs, so 9 and 12, so 9 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. Now some of you, when you do your work, it's a little hard to follow, so it would be really helpful for me, especially when I'm grading things, if you would kind of do it the way I'm going to do it here. If you don't, you're taking the chance that I might not be able to follow your work and it might get marked wrong. So it's a whole lot better if you just kind of follow along, do it the same way I do it. So 9 squared is 81, 12 squared is 144. It equals x squared. A lot of you like to put the number over here. 81 plus 144 is 225. And then all of a sudden x squared has disappeared. Okay, we don't want that to disappear. So just add down. Okay, and just keep working your way down. You notice we keep the equal sign nice and lined up. Keep things nice and neat. So 225 equals x squared. How do we get rid of a squared? Well, we have to cancel that out. And what cancels out a squared? It's a square root. So the square root of both sides. Okay, the square root of x squared is x equals 15. Now, technically the square root of x squared is positive or negative x. Um, you'll probably end up talking more about that in algebra class or definitely in calculus class when you take limits, if you take calculus. But for now, we know that lengths of triangles are always positive, so we're pretty much only going to deal with the positive square root for right now. We may get a little bit more into this plus or minus idea somewhere else, but for now, lengths are always positive, so we're just going to go with positive. Don't forget our label. We aren't given one, so we're just going to put units. It could be inches, feet, yards, anything like that in the future. So, nice and easy to grade. Look at the work. All right? That's the type of work I should be able to see and follow along really easily. All right, so let's take a look at another quick example. All right, over here we have another right triangle. All right, 7, and x, and 25. Remember, a and b are our legs, so in this case, 7 and x are a and b. The order you put them in doesn't really matter because the order of addition doesn't matter, but 25 has to be c. So we'll set that up as 7 squared plus x squared equals 25 squared. Once again, showing your work will be extremely helpful. 7 squared is 49, plus x squared equals 625. We subtract 49 from both sides. This cancels. x squared equals 576. We take the square root of both sides. x equals 24. It is a length. We'll go ahead and put units on it again. So x equals 24 units. Once again, the work is very nice and easy to read. All right, so that's the type of work you should be doing as you show your Pythagorean theorem work. All right, let's take a look at this example over here. It looks pretty similar to what we've done before. There's going to be one change on it. Right, so if you want to copy this one down real quick, we get a 6 and a 12 
and an X. Uh, if at any point in the video I'm going too fast, just pause it, rewind it, whatever you need to do. All right, A squared, B squared, C squared. C is always the hypotenuse, always across from the right angle. So six squared plus 12 squared equals X squared. Six squared is 36. 12 squared is 144. I keep my x squared over there. 36 plus 144 is 180, which equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides. Now, if I try to type the square root of 180 into my calculator, it's not going to work very well. It's going to give me an answer of 13 point something, and we'd have this really long decimal, and I've told you many times I don't want you rounding that decimal off. All right, so we're going to go with an exact answer. So I taught you earlier in the year how to do this factor tree idea, so we're going to take 180, it's divisible by 18 and 10. You might pick other numbers, but 18 and 10 works pretty easily. 9 and 2, 2 and 5, and here we have a 3 and a 3. So we have 2 twos, 2 threes, and a 5. So hopefully you remember how to do this. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. We look for pairs. We have a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s. We have a single 5. Pairs go outside the square root. 2 times 3 is 6. We don't do two twos outside, just a single 2. All right, so 2 times 3 is 6, and this 5 doesn't have a pair, so it stays inside. So 6 root 5 is our answer. Once again, we have our equals x. We can put units on this, and that equals our x. So 6 root 5 units. So we've done ones like that before, but that one gets a little bit harder. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna look at this three root five. What happens if three root five or something like that is one of the sides of our triangles? Here we actually see an example of that. I have a two root three as one of my sides. Squaring that three root five can cause problems if you are not careful. So if you have a calculator, go ahead and grab it. Um, pause this if you need to or whatever, but grab your calculator. And I want you to actually type in three root five squared and see what you get. So I'll give you a second to do that. Once again, pause it if you need to. But go ahead and type 3 root 5 squared into your calculator. All right, now, hopefully you have an answer by now. Um, if not, seriously, I want you to try it. I want you to type 3 root 5 squared into your calculator. Most of you will get one of two answers. If you get a different answer, I'm really not sure what you did. But some of you will get 15, and some of you will get 45. Obviously, both of those can't be right. So I'm not sure which one you got, but you're either going to get 15 or 45 for the most part. If you got anything other than that, you just totally type something in wrong. But 3 root 5 squared is actually 45. Now, why do a lot of people get 15? I'll show you real quick. They do 3 root. Depending on what your calculator might look like, it might put a parenthesis right here. And you type in that 5, and you might close that parenthesis, and you hit squared. Well, using our order of operations, it's going to take this 5 and square it first and give you 25. And then it's going to take the square root of 25, which is 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. That's how you're getting that 15. Uh, your calculator might look like this. 5 might actually go under the square root, okay, depending on what kind of calculator you're using. And when you put that squared out here, well, it still follows our order of operations, which says exponents before multiplying. So root 5 squared. The root and the squared basically cancel each other off. It just means root 5 times root 5. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25. And we know the square root of 25 is 5. So that's why the root and the squared are basically canceling each other off. But once again, we would get 3 times 5 is 15. So either of these, if you type it in this way in your calculator, is going to give you 15. Obviously, that's not correct. I already told you that was wrong. So how should you be typing it in? And I'm going to actually show you how to do it without typing into your calculator anyways. But what you would have to do is put a parenthesis here, then your 3 and your root, and then your parenthesis there. Your calculator usually adds that parenthesis in automatically if it looks like this. You close that one, then you close the first one, and then you finally put your squared. If you do that, you're going to get 45. Now, if your calculator automatically puts this root and you can type a number underneath it, the newer TI-84s look like that and so on, you're still going to need a parenthesis at the beginning, 3 root 5, close that parenthesis. You'll probably need, you may need to use your right arrow to get out from underneath the root, but you want that parenthesis out there and then it's squared here. That will also give you 45. 
Okay, now you, I want you to actually be able to do this without using a calculator. So I'm going to show you how to do it without using a calculator. And I'm going to require you to do these steps. If you do not do these steps, then we're going to have issues. All right. And I'm going to mark it wrong basically until you start learning to use these steps properly. And I know some of you will think I'm too picky on that, but you can get over it. So here's how you're going to do it. It's going to take four steps. First thing, you are going to put it in parentheses with the squared outside. So it looks just like this, but you're going to do this by hand. I want you to be able to do this by hand without a calculator. So in parentheses, squared outside. Now, when we square something, it means we are multiplying by itself. So we're taking 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. Well, we're going to do that kind of in pieces. We're going to take the 3 and we're going to do that times 3. Remember, the order of operations doesn't matter. So we're going to really square the 3 first. And then we're going to square the 5. Okay? It's kind of like a distributive property. It's, it's not. Distributive property is multiplication over addition. But it's kind of like that. All right, so we're taking 3 and we're squaring it. We're taking root 5 and we're also squaring it. And that's fine to do if you have multiplication here. It's not okay to do if you have addition here. So 3 squared, root 5 squared. Right, 3 squared, root 5 squared. Um, the reason this works, real quick, 3 root 5 squared means 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. The order of multiplication does not matter, so I can multiply the 3's together first. And then I can multiply the root 5's together second. Well, 3 times 3 is 3 squared. And root 5 times root 5 is root 5 squared. So you don't need to write all this. You need to write it this way. It's a lot faster. All right, then writing all this out. So just square both parts. Now 3 squared we know is 9. Root 5 squared, already talked about that up here. The root and the squared cancel each other off. So all we're left with is a 5. There's nothing here, which means multiply. So it's 9 times 5, and then finally 45. Okay, so you need to write it this way. I will take points off if you don't write it this way for at least the first few times we do this. For all of your homework for 7.1, you're going to write it this way, all right? So if you don't write it this way in your homework for 7.1, I am going to mark it wrong, okay? You've had enough warning. If you do it that way, you're going to do it again. All right, so now let's use that process over here. We've got our A, our B, and our C. So 2 root 3 parentheses squared plus 6 squared equals x squared. Okay, we're going to go through that four-step process. I got the parentheses squared. I'm going to square both parts. I get my numbers. I'm going to get my answer. So over here, 2 squared, root 3 squared. We know that 2 squared is 4. The root and the squared cancel off, leaving me with a 3. I put my dot in there because I know it's multiplication. 4 times 3 is 12. Now 6 squared is 36. I'm going to bring that all the way down to right here. Bring my plus down, my equals, and my x squared. Now 12 plus 36 is 48, equals x squared, square root on both sides. Square root of 48 as a decimal is about 6.9, all right? So we don't want a decimal. We're not going to be rounding that off, so we're going to use our factor tree. I'm going to come over here and do the factor tree real quick. Square root of 48, 4 times 12. You might pick some other numbers there. I'm just going with 4 times 12. We got 2 times 2, 2 times 6, 2 times 3. So I have four twos and a three. So four twos and a three, pair of twos, pair of twos. Pairs go outside, two times two is four, three stays inside. So four root three units equals x. All right. So work is nice and easy to follow. Did my four steps here, six squared, nice and easy to follow, square root. Broke it down off to the side and got my answer. Do not give me decimal answers, I will not take them. All right, here we go. A little bit different just because of the way I drew the triangle, but we still have one of these kind of uh, root things we got to deal with. So A, B, or we can switch it, A and B, but this is our C. It's the hypotenuse, all right? So here we go. X squared plus 10 squared equals parentheses 8 root 2 squared. Okay, if you don't write it in parentheses, it is incorrect, all right? Now X squared plus 100 equals, we're going to do our steps here, so 8 squared, root 2 squared, 64 times 2, and 128. Bring that x squared plus 100 equals down. You could have just not even written it up here and just dropped straight down to here if you want. All right, we're going to subtract 100 from both sides. x squared, those cancel, equals 28. 
square root of both sides. Square root of 28 is about 5.29, 5.28, something like that. We don't want that decimal again, though. We're not going to be rounding things off. So we're going to break this one down. That's 4 times 7. we got 2 times 2. And that's it. So I have a pair of 2s. And a single 7. Pairs go outside. Singles go inside. X equals 2 root 7 units. All right. One more example, this one's got roots in both spots. All right, so this makes it just not, a, not too much harder, just a little bit more work. Two root five, parentheses squared, plus three root two, parentheses squared equals x squared. Okay, two squared, root five squared, plus three squared, root two squared equals x squared. Four times five, nine times two, 20 plus 18 equals x squared. That's a 38 equals x squared. All right, we take the square root of both sides. The square root of 38, once again, is a decimal. It's about 6.1 or 6.2. We don't want a decimal. We're not going to round it off, so we're going to break this down real quick. 2 times 19. 19 doesn't break down any farther. I have no pairs. Nothing comes out. Everything stays inside. Can't really simplify it. x equals root 38 units. Alright, so there's our Pythagorean theorem put to use, and we're going to be doing that quite a bit throughout chapter 7.